Question. Who invented chicken nuggets? Just like many of our favorite modern foods, the origin of the chicken nugget is a bit murky, and no one can say for absolute certain who invented them. That being said, a scientist and professor named Robert C. Baker is most often credited with inventing chicken nuggets in his lab at Cornell University in the early 60s. Whether he was the true innovator of the nugget or not, Robert C. Baker was clearly passionate about bird meat. He came up with more than 40 new ways to prepare poultry, with inventions like chicken hot dogs, ground chicken, and whatever turkey ham is. Okay, so that's who likely invented the fast food staple, but why was Baker trying to create a new concoction, and how did he do it? The nugget was invented to solve a big problem for the slumping chicken industry. At the time, almost all chickens were sold whole, which kind of made it inconvenient. A whole chicken wasn't thought to be quite enough meat to feed an entire family, but it was definitely too much for just one person. On top of that, roasting a whole chicken takes a lot of time and effort, and families were finding they had less and less time to dedicate to making more complicated meals. Now, with these newfangled chicken nuggets, there was finally a way to package poultry in easy, bite-sized servings that could be frozen and fried up quickly. Problem solved! Baker's big innovation that made the chicken nugget possible was because of another one of his poultry creations, ground chicken. He molded chunks of skinless, ground-up chicken meat and covered them with breading. The breading is actually the key. It holds the morsels of meat together while sitting in a freezer or frying in a pan. And almost overnight, chicken went from a food not quite fit for a feast to one of the most popular proteins in the country. All by turning chicken into a handheld, well, nugget. So, next time you're plowing through a pile of dino-shaped nuggets, you can thank a poultry pioneer for making it his passion project to bring us the perfect chicken snack and nailing it. Who invented soda? To find out who first invented soda, we need to flash back to England in the year 1767, where a scientist named Joseph Priestley first discovered a method for creating carbonated water. He loved the taste of his new bubbly drink and at first just shared it with family and friends who came to visit. But in 1772, Priestley published a paper called Impregnating Water with Fixed Air, where he laid out his process for the masses. One of the people who read his paper was John Mervyn North, who improved on Priestley's design and sold it commercially to pharmacies. Why pharmacies instead of convenience stores? Well, in those days, mineral water was considered a health drink, kind of like the smoothies of their day. Eventually, pharmacies started adding different herbs and chemicals to improve the flavor. Ginger, birch bark, dandelion, sarsaparilla, fruit extracts, and all sorts of other things. People loved these new fizzy drinks, and soda quickly grew in popularity. But there was one huge problem that was keeping soda from being mass-produced. They didn't have a good way to seal the glass bottles shut. Inventors tried for years to devise ways to trap the carbonation inside without letting the gas leak, and not pressurizing bottles too much that they exploded. It took them years and dozens of different designs, but eventually, the crown cork bottle seal was invented by a machine shop owner in Baltimore. This was the first cap to successfully trap the bubbles inside, and we still use it today. Now, with a spiffy new cap, sales of bottled soda took off. Vending machines were invented in the 1920s, and the soda can came along in the 30s, which gave customers even more ways to find it. So, who invented soda? Well, no one person invented that fizzy drink alone, but Joseph Priestley and his bubbles got the party started, so thanks for that. Who invented ice cream? The inventor of ice cream is hard to pin down and really depends on who you ask. The earliest known version of ice cream dates way back to ancient Greece, when Athenians would buy a mixture of snow, fruit, and honey from city markets. 
but ice and honey isn't exactly ice cream. So the next possible origin of ice cream takes us to ancient China. In those days, ice desserts were reserved for the most elite in Chinese society. Stories claim that Chinese King Tang of Shang had 94 men on hand just to bring him fresh ice daily. The king would use the ice to make an early version of Chinese ice cream called kumis. But kumis, like the ancient Greek snow cones, is really only an ancestor of ice cream, not the real deal. So who invented ice cream as we know it today? The next stop on our search is ancient Rome. Like in China, ice desserts were considered a luxury to the Romans. Stories claim that the Roman Emperor Nero would have snow collected from mountains and mixed with nectar, fruit pulp, and honey. Fast forward over a thousand years, past the Dark Ages, the Crusades, and all sorts of other weird stuff, to the 1630s, during the reign of King Charles I of England. Unconfirmed stories say that he was so impressed by the frozen snow that he gave his ice cream maker a life salary to keep the recipe a royal secret. The earliest known English ice cream recipes are from a cookbook published in 1718. Quaker colonists from England introduced their own ice cream recipes to the United States. Ben Franklin, George Washington, and Thomas Jefferson were all known to love ice cream. Records show that George Washington spent about $200 just on ice cream in the summer of 1790. That's about $5,000 in today's money. So who invented ice cream? Well, your guess is as good as mine. In reality, ice cream, like all the best recipes, evolved over time by people who made it over and over again until they landed on the absolute perfect treat. Who invented fries? Considering that we call them French fries in the US, you might think that French fries were invented in France, but it's actually still hotly debated. The French often insist they invented the delicious dish, but Belgium seems to have a slightly better claim as the creator of the modern fry. Back in the 1830s, fried potatoes were a popular dish in both Belgium and France, and the first English reference to fries doesn't come until 1894, where they're called French fried potatoes. But according to Belgians, there's a little more to the story. Poor Belgian villagers often caught small fish and fried them up. During the winter, lakes and rivers would freeze, leaving the villagers to find other foods. So that's when french fries were born. They would cut up a potato the long way, about the same size as the fish they normally caught, fried them up, and voila, flavorful french fries. Okay, so that's most likely where modern fries came from, but how did they catch on and become so popular? French fries really took off after soldiers stationed in Belgium first got a taste of them during World War I. The soldiers loved the fried food, and it was a smash hit. French was the official language of the Belgian army, so the soldiers started calling their new favorite treat French fries, and the name stuck. Because fries are a favorite food around the world, they can come with all sorts of different toppings or condiments depending on where you are. In the US, Ketchup, mayo, and vinegar are common dipping sauces, and chili cheese is a common topping. But in Canada, lots of people top their french fries with a cheese curd and gravy combo called poutine. In England, fries are called chips and make up the second half of the famous English dish, fish and chips. And a popular way to eat fries in France is with a steak or steamed mussels. And that's just the start. Just about every country in the world has found ways to take fries and add a local flair. It kind of makes me want to try them all. Who invented chocolate? When you think of chocolate, you probably picture sugary candy bars, cakes, and other delicious desserts. But it turns out that's actually a fairly new way to have chocolate. For most of its history, chocolate was only used as a drink and had no sugar added to it at all. Most modern historians believe that chocolate has been around for close to 4,000 years and maybe much longer. The earliest evidence of chocolate can be found in South American cultures like the Olmec who lived there three or 4,000 years ago. 
To South American civilizations like the Olmec and later the Mayans and Aztecs, chocolate was extremely valuable, and the cacao beans used to make it were even traded as currency. They considered chocolate to be a divine gift from the gods. Sugar wasn't added to chocolate until after Europeans invaded South America. You see, the Aztecs believed that Spanish invader Hernán Cortés was an Aztec god reincarnated. They treated Cortés and his men to a giant banquet that included their divine chocolate drink, but the Spaniards found it too bitter to enjoy. So they started to mix the chocolate drink with sugarcane or honey, and suddenly it wasn't so bad. Sadly for the Aztecs, Cortés wasn't a reincarnated god. He was an invader with a large army and went on to loot tons of gold and chocolate that was brought back to Europe. Sweet chocolate drinks quickly became popular all around Europe among the rich. It wasn't until the Industrial Revolution and the invention of the steam engine that chocolate could finally be mass-produced and available to the masses. Okay, so chocolate is super old and was a bitter drink a lot longer than it was sweet, but when did it change from a drink to a food? The modern chocolate bar was invented by an Englishman named Joseph Fry. In 1847, he figured out how to make a thick chocolate paste by mixing cocoa butter with powdered chocolate. By 1868, the English company Cadbury was selling chocolate candies, and a few years later, milk chocolate was created by mixing in powdered milk, and before we knew it, the world's greatest treat had reached its fully modern form. Today, the chocolate industry rakes in more than $4 billion a year in the U.S. alone, and the average American eats about a half a pound of chocolate per month. That's a lot of trips to the dentist. Who invented donuts? The invention of the modern donut dates back to Dutch settlers coming to the New World in the late 1700s. They called their doughy dessert Olikok, which literally means oily cake, and they brought the recipe with them when they settled in modern-day New York. These early Dutch donuts were very similar to the ones we eat today, except for one important difference. They didn't have a hole in the middle. Donuts are first mentioned in a book called The History of New York in 1809. The author writes that, Sometimes the table was graced with immense apple pies, or saucers filled with preserved peaches and pears. But it was always sure to boast an enormous dish of balls of sweetened dough fried in hog's fat and called donuts. According to the author, very few in New York knew about donuts at the time. But by the 1850s, donuts had their modern look and taste, and they were seen as a thoroughly American food. A man named Hanson Gregory is credited with inventing the donut hole. His story goes like this. In 1847, aboard a trading ship, 16-year-old Hanson Gregory didn't like how greasy his donuts would get and how sometimes the metal wouldn't quite cook through. Aboard his ship, Gregory started punching holes through the dough to solve his 1800s first world problem, and donuts were never the same. They continued to grow and grow in popularity, and in 1938, the United States officially declared the first Friday of June National Donut Day. It was established to honor the brave non-combat volunteers who cooked and served donuts to the troops during World War I. So of all the desserts to get its own special day on the American calendar, the donut has definitely earned its keep. Who invented cheese? People have been eating cheese since before recorded history, and no one can say for sure how it was first discovered. But experts do have a good theory. Thousands of years ago, people traveling across the desert would carry rations of milk in the leak-proof stomach of a sheep, kind of like an ancient canteen. The thing is, sheep stomachs contain an enzyme called rennet that helps turn milk into cheese. As they trekked across the hot sand, the milk would slosh around in the stomach and slowly churn the milk into cheese. When the thirsty travelers stopped for a drink and found their milk was now full of hard lumps, they drank it anyway, 
and ate the curdled, cheesy leftovers. Ancient cultures like the Sumerians and Egyptians both made and ate cheese regularly as much as 6,000 years ago. But it was the Romans who took cheese making to the next level. Rich Romans had a whole separate room in their house designed just for cheese making and storage. They developed new techniques for aging, smoking, and flavoring their cheese. The Roman Empire was vast and stretched all the way from Northern Africa to the British Isles. So local resources in different parts of the empire made for different types of cheeses. Taste, texture, flavors, and colors were all affected by local customs. And over decades, Romans developed hundreds of different types of cheese. So the next time you're chowing down on some cheese, you can thank that random ancient stranger who first ate milk clumps out of a sheep's stomach. And then enjoy the rest of your cheese. <laughs>